Yo, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I've been getting a lot of questions about how I use virtual desktop with the MetaQuest 3 to play Steam VR games. So I'm going to show you just like a quick setup on how I pull this off. Um, your mileage may vary. There's nothing wrong with the Oculus Link or Air Link or Steam Link or any other, you know, situation that you use. I prefer virtual desktop. I find it works best for me. It does take a different technique though to get it up and running. So I'm going to show you that. Um, first and foremost, what you're going to need is you are going to need the virtual desktop app from the store. Virtual desktop is I think 20, 20 us dollars, uh, to buy, right? But that's the first thing you're going to need is virtual desktop, um, on the quest. Um, you also need the virtual desktop streamer application which is free and you need it installed on your pc and it needs to be running so there's two components the virtual desktop app on the the quest and this is from the meta store and the virtual desktop streamer app which is by the same people but that runs on your pc and it needs to be running in order for you to connect so how do i connect clearly i'm not connected to the internet right now i couldn't load the store and the reason for that is I have a wireless router plugged directly into my computer. Okay, future me here. I'm going to show you a diagram of the architecture and hopefully it helps you out because this was the trickiest part with getting virtual desktop up and running cleanly with the Quest 3. There's something with the way that Wi-Fi 6 is implemented on the Quest 3 that it caused a lot of problems. So my computer is over here, right? This is my computer right here. It is connected to my home Wi-Fi as every other Wi-Fi device would be connected to. Okay, so my phone is connected to this Wi-Fi, my computer is connected to this Wi-Fi, and ultimately this Wi-Fi is connected to the internet, www, right? That's all of our web pages. That Wi-Fi is the one that we, we pay for, that's our internet, okay? And my PC is connected to that. When I play a game, this is the Wi-Fi that is used for the game to connect and use multiplayer features. Okay, that's very, very important. Now, my computer, on the other hand, has a physical cable plugged into it. And that physical cable is connected to this router here. And this is a very special router. It's a very specific router right it's tp links axe 5400 tri-band wi-fi 6e router say that a thousand times this is a very specific router that a lot of people in the community have said work well for the quest 3 and virtual desktop it just happens to handle the way the quest 3 communicates over wi-fi 6 the best so yes i did go buy a special router just for this now that router is configured in access point mode that's very important to know so that means that it cannot reach out to the internet this does not work it, it's impossible it does not have a connection to the internet the only thing it has a connection to is my pc and it has that connection because it's wired the quest is where things get crazy if i try to connect the quest over to this wi-fi here my home wi-fi it does not work it stutters there's too much interference it's laggy it doesn't work well even though my home wi-fi is still wi-fi 6 all right so what i ended up having to do is take the quest and instead of connect it over there i connect it wirelessly to this router and the only thing allowed on this network is my quest right so it speaks directly to my router and this is an access point mode then the router talks to the computer via the cable the pc then reaches out via the wi-fi up here and then we have multiplayer so that's the basic architecture so you did i did need an extra cable and an extra router and i connect the quest directly to that so what does that mean that means my quest does not get updated no updates unless I connect it to a different 
router, which is the only time I connect it to this router is I do this about once a week. I connect it to the router and I update all the software that's on it because you do need to keep virtual desktop updated or else it will fall out of sync because your computer version, your desktop version of it, the streamer app itself will be a different version than the MetaQuest app. So that's how I make this happen. It is a little bit of setup. It's not too terrible. If that's scary to you, reach out to me in the Discord and I'm more than happy to help you. All right, let's get back to the demonstration in the headset. That wireless router is configured in access point mode. Um, how you configure your router in access point mode is going to change per router, but you'll see here, that's what I'm connected to. So I'm, con and it can't provide internet. So this Wi-Fi network right here is connected to the wireless router that's plugged directly into my computer and it acts as an invisible cable from my computer to my quest. My computer is where I get the internet from. So I'm able to run games or do whatever because my computer is connected to the internet. The only thing on this Wi-Fi network is my quest connected to my PC. Once you have those things taken care of, you can launch virtual desktop. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you'll be greeted with this handy dandy loading screen. Now, if you have virtual desktop and you've used it before, you'll automatically connect to your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to disconnect really quick so that you'll see what you might see if you've never connected. So any computer on the network that your quest is on. So in my case, it's that that six gig network that's that's connected to the access point that is 100% connected to my computer, I see my desktop. If I had more than one computer running the virtual desktop streamer app, then it would show up here. And here's where you can configure some settings, right? So if you wanna change the way the background looks, you have all the options in here. To do that, I don't really spend a lot of time in this screen, so I don't really care. Um, if you have, games that you want to launch through like the the meta app on the computer like the oculus store you can do that through here you can configure this you can configure virtual desktop to allow that to happen and you'll, that'll show up in this tab once you're connected to a computer um, you have a breakdown of the input and then you have two different settings tabs the first settings tab is about like when i'm using the computer as a computer so this is just like when my desktop is is streamed to the quest and the streaming tab is like when i'm playing a game so you'll see i can leverage my 4090 i can change my frame rates i can change my bit rate i, I have configuration options to make this the smoothest possible thing for me okay so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna hit connect it's establishing the connection because again i'm connected to that that router as a wireless access point and bam here is my desktop so when I'm in the desktop, that's these settings are the ones that are applied. Now to open this screen, I use the left, like the left menu button on this controller. I just press that in and it, and it opens up. The virtual desktop streamer app also has options. Like you can log into your meta account, right? So if I fill in my username and password for my meta account, that's what allows me to see the games that I might have in the oculus store see up here it says oculus and then it says steam so once i'm connected this games tab kind of opens up and you can launch games from this tab it's actually the recommended way to do it i don't do it though uh, but you can just launch your games directly from here the reality is is this is only being pulled in because i've connected my meta account to the streamer app you can also set up some other shortcuts if you want and change your options um the nice thing about virtual desktop right now is it has this preferred codec that's specific for quest three and they have their own flavor of the open xr runtime and i think that's it runs really really great for me and that's the app and that's running down here in my system tray now that i'm connected to my desktop i can do stuff on my computer um, but most importantly what i really care about is is playing games on my computer so i'm going to show you like um, if you wanted to see like a performance overlay you can go ahead and, and click that and that will show you things like your frame rate and your delay and and things that might impact like your overall quality as you play games. Um, I don't need to see it. I haven't needed to see it since I tuned all my settings in how I like them. Um, I do play at 72 frames a second and that's so I can crank the Steam VR settings up as much as possible. Um, so here we go. I press the, the thumb button to open this menu. 
and I can either pick a game here and launch it, or I can hit launch Steam VR. And that's my preferred method. So I launch Steam VR and I wait a second. And just like that, Steam VR launches. And it doesn't look like you expect it to look. You're not loaded directly into the Steam VR home. The reality is, is now if I press that left hamburger menu button thing, it brings up basically my Steam library. If I double click that, so click, click, I get back to my desktop and I can do stuff. And if I double click it, click, click back to my desktop. And if I single click, it goes away. Single click, this comes up. So if I wanted to launch Steam Home, I could come in here and I could find like Steam VR Home and I can hit play on this. And in just a moment, it will launch. So if I wanted to be in Steam VR, the home thing, I can. If I want to launch a game, I can do that as well. I just come in here the same way I would with any headset and I go ahead and I pick a game and I click on it and I hit launch and I'm playing that game, no problem. But I am 100% wireless right now using Steam VR on the MetaQuest 3 because of virtual desktop. The reason I do this is because this, my Pimax Crystal, is heavy and it's tethered, right? So like I have to use a cable and I find it uncomfortable over time when if, if I need to wear it for a really long time where the Quest is much lighter and it's, it's easier to wear and it's easier to have on wirelessly if I'm playing like a shooter game where I need to spin around in circles. I have nothing holding me down to my computer because there's no tether. The other nice thing is I get like overlays and stuff. So I have OpenXR Toolkit running right now. I can have all of my overlays pop up because I'm using Steam VR. So I hope that helps. Um, what I will say is that you're probably going to have problems and you're going to need to play a lot in these settings to figure out what you might want to change in order to impact your performance. And it also depends on the router you have. The router that you have set up as the access point makes a gigantic difference in how well all of this streams. But you can see, I can stream at 200 megabits a second. I'm getting 72 frames a second and I'm doing it on great graphics. Um, I don't have a problem with the way any of this looks. I can manage my entire Steam library from here. I can manage friends. I have all the stuff that I might want as if I'm on a wired headset only I'm using the Quest. I hope that helps somebody. If you like the video, you know what to do like the video. If you want to see more, um, not necessarily like this, but just more VR content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.